Hello, my name is T-Bone, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a Gorilla Tag fan game map. So I'm going to be doing this in Blender because I find it hard to use Pro Builder sometimes using Unity. If you don't know what buttons I'm pressing, go ahead, just check down here at the bottom right, and it shows you every single key I'm pressing. Go ahead, delete everything, and then we're going to add a new plane here. I'm going to scale this up to whatever size you want your actual ground to be. I'm going to scale it to 15 by clicking S, then whatever number, and then you have a decently sized map. So go back into edit mode by clicking this and then edit mode or clicking tab. Then right click subdivide and then subdivide this by 10. Now right click again and then click subdivide again. And then you're gonna change this to how high quality you want this to be. So in my case, I don't want it to be that high quality. So I'm gonna change this to about three. So go into face selection mode by clicking this button up here and then select some random faces by holding down shift and then just select some parts of the map where you want there to either be hills or any sort of bumps or terrain or literally anything. So I kind of want this to be my terrain here. So then I'm gonna click G and then Z to scale this up. You can also scale it down if you wanted to, but I'm gonna scale this up. So click G, Z, and then you can scale this to however much you want your terrain to be. So now we're gonna add the walls, which a lot of people do differently, but I'm gonna be showing you the way I personally do. Then we're gonna add a new cylinder and then scale it up to just the size of the actual map here. Make sure it's just the size of the map. Otherwise, if it's bigger, this probably won't work for you. So go ahead, click on edit mode and then delete by clicking X faces. Then you're gonna delete the faces. So I am seeing basically what would happen if I imported this into Unity right now. Unity has something called backface cooling and that's not good when we're modeling things. So if you wanna see what your map would look like with backface cooling, which I do a lot, you're gonna make sure you're in solid view, click this arrow and then turn on backface cooling and then you see everything. So go ahead, click on this, go into edit mode, click select all, click alt N and then flip. So now the outside will be invisible, but the inside isn't. So your user can see everything. So now we're going to go ahead and then scale this down on the Z axis here. And then we're just gonna pull this to however you want your map to look like. So I'm just gonna select the move tool and then move it in or out dependent on generally what I want my map to look like. So now we're gonna just move it up by clicking G, Z, and then you can move this up. Make sure it's at least sticking through it, otherwise people can just get out. Then we're going to click on the walls, go back into edit mode here, click on the edge selection mode, click, hold down alt, shift, make sure you clicked on one of them, and then click on the edges here so you can select the outside of it. Then drag it up and then scale it by clicking S. Scale it to how you want your map to look like if you want it to be enclosed, which I wouldn't do. I would probably make it a bit bigger so they can wall climb, wall run, all that stuff. Now, since I'm going for a Capuchin map style, go ahead, click E to extrude, and then scale it up or extrude it up just like that much. Then click S to scale it out here. Now, click E and then Z to scale it up, and then that's the actual part of our map here. Capuchin is this part of the map where there's an up section and you can get to like different maps. And that's kind of how I want my map to look like, so I'm gonna do that. So now we have to apply textures to this. So make sure you're in material preview here, and then we're gonna add textures to your map. Genuinely, textures are pretty difficult to find. However, I did find a website that I personally use to get my textures from. I use a website called Ambient CG, and this is where you can get all your textures from. Just click explore, and then type in whatever you want, like grass. The grass I'm gonna be using, I believe, is ground 037. However, you can use any of these grass textures, and then the walls, I just typed rock, and then you can find whatever rock texture, which I think is this one, and then that's basically how I find all my textures. So, we're gonna go ahead and go into edit mode here. Go to face selection mode, and then select the grass on the map. Go into the material tab, click new, and then click assign. Make sure you click assign, otherwise this probably won't work for you. See where it says base color here, you're gonna click on that little circle and then click image texture, click open, and then find your texture. So these are all my textures. I'm gonna select the grass texture. So you're gonna notice the grass texture applies to legitimately everything, but we're gonna fix that real quick. Select the walls down here, like that. Select the walls up here as well by holding Alt, Shift, and then selecting them. Click Add New Material, New, and then Assign, and then go. We just added a new material here. Select the grass again, and you're gonna notice it looks pretty wonky. Click One, or go to negative Y right here, and then click U, and then Cube Projection, and then it should fix all the grass like that. 
Now, this will only work in Blender, but if you want it to look a bit pixelated in Blender, go ahead, select your little material, change it from linear to closest, and it adds pixelation to it. So now we're going to add the wall texture by clicking on this material, base color, select image texture, then you're going to find your texture here, which is rock, and then it's going to do the same thing here. So select the walls, click one on your numpad or negative Y, click U, and then Q projection. However, it still won't look right. So go ahead into edit mode, click the UV editing tab, and I'm just going to make sure I can see my materials here. Click A on this side of the screen, and then go ahead and click S. On this side of the screen, make sure it's on the side, click S and then X. And scale it to however you want it to look like. Make sure it's not too stretched. So I'm going to scale it to about this. So now we have the actual wall textures. Once again, I'm going to change mine to closes so it looks a bit pixelated, just so you guys can see. Back into the layout tab here, and then we're going to add the grass texture for the actual grass. Add, then click this button here, and then change it to the grass material that we already had set. Now we have the map pretty much completed. However, it looks dead. It's just a forest with nothing. So we're going to add some trees. So go ahead, click on your walls. In the hierarchy tab, click on the little H or the hide button. Then do the same thing for the grass. Now click shift A, cube, go into negative Y view again. Click tab or go into edit mode. Then click M at center. This will have a singular vertice here. Make sure you're in vertice selection mode, by the way. And then you have a singular vertice here. So now make sure you're still in negative Y view. Click E to extrude and then Z to extrude on the actual Z axis here. This is going to be how tall your tree is. So make sure it is up to scale whenever you look at your actual map, which it's pretty much up to scale here. Then go into edit mode again, click negative Y view. And then we're going to add some loop cuts by clicking the loop cut button here. Click on in the center of this tree, then click above and then in the middle of those two, and then click here, and then right there. Then make sure you're in the Move tool here, and then click E to extrude out while you're selecting one of them, and this adds branches to a tree. Then you're going to make sure to move these around to your liking so that it actually kind of looks like branches are branching out. So go back in a negative Y view, and then we're gonna add some more loop cuts in the middle of these branches here. Now we can drag them down or up so it looks pretty much like the gorilla tag trees but now we have to add branches that branch off of the branch which is a lot to say but it makes it look really just it adds that extra touch so add a loop cut in between every single branch like that in between here so then click on the move tool again click e to extrude and then just extrude them freely and then this is like branches branching off of the branch so now I'm finished with my tree here. Go ahead, go into the modifiers tab, click add modifier and add the skin modifier. Now I'm going to go back into our back face culling view here. If you don't remember how I did that, go into solid view, click on the arrow, back face culling, and then we can scale this tree. So click tab A and then control A to scale this up or down here. So you're going to notice sometimes if you scale it, you're going to get invisible parts. We don't want that. So scale it to just the right size, which can be, for me, right about here. So you could technically be done, but I generally don't like the way it looks right now. So I'm going to go into wireframe view by clicking Z and then just dragging it to wireframe and selecting every end of the branch here. So now click Control A and then I'm just gonna scale them down just a little bit so it adds a bit more like stuff to look at here. And then we're gonna go back to material view and then I'm actually gonna scale down the trunk a bit or scale it up here. And then go back into material view, add a new material, and then we're gonna change it to image texture once again. Find your bark texture and then it's probably just gonna be one solid color here. So you're going to go ahead, make sure you apply the modifier by going to the modifiers tab, clicking the arrow and then apply. So then it's an actual mesh and we can select all points. Then select all by clicking A here. Going into negative Y view, U, and then Q projection. If it's too scaled up or scaled down, we're going to go into UV editing once more here. And then scale it up or down, depending on what you want the tree to actually look like. So that we have the tree completed, we can unhide everything. And then we can either scale up or down, depending on how it looks like in your actual map here. And then, boom, just duplicate it by clicking Shift D. And then you can rotate it on the Z axis by clicking RZ. 
and then you can just move them around the map here. So now that I've kind of populated the bottom here, you can do it with the top, however, I generally don't want to do that right now. So that's going to be it for this tutorial, but in the next tutorial, I'm going to be showing you either how to add a stump to your map, or some little sections up here like Capuchin, like you can get to a different map, and all that stuff. So that is it for this video, I hope you liked it, and if you did, please leave a like on the video. Have a great day, and goodbye.